everyone, it's Sammy from Sammy Sweet Life and I'm very excited. This is going to be part two of my how-to charcuterie series. It's just basics in how to make a charcuterie board. I love making these. I'm super late to the trend. I talked about this in my last video where I showed you guys how to make pepperoni and salami roses and rosettes. They're just super easy but wow factor elements. And this is another wow factor type of video. This is all about brie cheese or these soft cheeses with a rind. You can do this with like camembert, something else is very similar to that. But I ended up getting brie. I got H-E-B brand just because that happened to be what they have and it happened to be a coupon code deal with these ones. So I ended up with a couple of small ones to show you a couple of different techniques and then also a larger one to give you slicing ideas. So first up, you're gonna want a small-ish full-on brie. We're not gonna do any sort of baked brie, but there are really cool baked brie options as well that I may cover in a separate video. This is just straight up cold brie. I got sizes that are just a full wheel of cheese. So these ones just happen to be double cream. You can get triple cream as well. They're just smaller sized ones. And then I got something else you may find at the grocery store, just a big chunk of brie. And this one's great for slicing, and these ones are great for some show-stopping type of designs. I'll give you some arrangement ideas for the slicing, and then I will show you a couple of different techniques with this. So for this technique, I'm using parchment paper, and something I do is I actually put parchment paper over my wood board when I'm using brie most of the time, especially sliced ones where the actual inside is gonna touch the board. It's just nice to have the parchment paper there so they're easy to get on and off and they don't gunk up your board. Of course, you know, you're gonna wash it, but it's easier to wash it when you can just pull that parchment paper off and have a more intact board. But I just got a board here. This one is from Pottery Barn. It has my little initial in it. And we're gonna use this as part of our example today. So you're gonna need some parchment paper. I just get these in bulk, like the same size as my baking sheets. I've got some 12 inch round ones and then just the ones that fit the standard like half baking sheet size. I also got the brie and the various types I told you about. And then I have a couple of tools for this technique. So with these smaller ones, we're gonna do some jelly with them. I just happen to have this right now. It is the natural spread um, strawberry. So you can do this with like a chipotle or a jalapeno type of spread to give it a spicy kick. I tend to usually do these parties that are gonna involve kids, so I tend to stick to something very mild, like uh, strawberry jam, and it looks really pretty because it's a reddish, pinkish color. But one of my girlfriends brings a baked brie and it has raspberry chipotle jam in it. It is amazing. It's just one of the best ones I've ever had. So definitely recommend switching it up and trying out a few things if you want to get more adventurous with it. So I've got some tools. I'm going to need a sharper knife. I like this serrated knife. It's just what we have for like, you know, cutting up steaks and things. You're going to need a sharp knife for this technique. I also have a spoon and just a butter knife here. So I'm going to set all of these to the side, get out my parchment paper because I definitely don't want to mess up my <laughs> like planner surface here. So for the brie, we're going to start with like the easiest cheater method to do this. Last thing you're gonna need actually is a cookie cutter and you're gonna want your cookie cutter smaller than your actual cheese. So I have gotten bigger ones to be able to use bigger cookie cutters, but this one takes a smaller cookie cutter. So I just have a collection of these. I picked these up over time. I've gotten some like leaf ones off Amazon. So that would be a cute one for like a fall themed or Thanksgiving themed one. I got like this 3D pumpkin that I ended up using at one point and just trimming this section as well. I'm having a little pumpkin on there, but you can get, you know, you can get wild. If you're doing a Halloween charcuterie, you can get it like a darker color or a greenish colored jam and do something like a bat. Like you can do lots of different things. So I've got various options. I'll show a few up on the screen of what we're doing with this, but this is the super easy cheater method of this. So you're gonna need your parchment paper and we're gonna go ahead and open this. I do have washed hands. Full disclosure, if I'm doing this for a group and entertaining, I will wear gloves for this. But because it's just for me and my family won't eat this, it's just, <laughs> it's what I will eat and then that's it. Um, I don't need gloves. I'm just, you know, I'm eating it. I'm okay with just washed hands. I'm not entertaining, but you can get gloves on Amazon, super cheap. I just get food safe gloves and a big bulk pack and they're cheap. Okay, so I've got my brie cheese. I picked the side that's not as wrinkled up. Like this is the underside, so it got all wrinkly. This is the front top side and we're gonna just cut the top like quarter-ish inch, maybe up to a half an inch off of this. Safety is key here because it is a rolly type of thing. So just, you know, be careful, use caution. But I'm gonna cut like, you know, the top quarter inch and you're gonna go all the way down and make sure you slice the entire top layer off. So don't 
go catty corner and like cut into any of this surface. We're just cutting straight down and I do take my time and the serrated knife is really helpful for this so that you get all the way across and you're making a good clean cut. You know, it doesn't have to necessarily be even, but it does need to make sure you're getting that whole surface of your brie off of there. Okay, I'm almost to the edge. Okay, and then that's gonna be the brie that's gonna sit on your plate. And of course it's not great, but it's cut. And then this is gonna be your top of your brie and this is what we're gonna cut. So I'm just gonna you know, pick a leaf. It doesn't really matter what thing it is. And like the red jam looks great for Christmas or Valentine's Day. I did some hearts once, like with smaller ones and cut multiple hearts. You're just gonna make sure you're lined up within the rind of this and just cut. Okay, so this, of course, because it's the sticky cheese, it does take a little bit of finessing. And you see, I got a crack there, it's fine. You'll cover it up, no big deal. I cut a little bit awkward here. Again, it's fine. You're gonna slowly peel this off of your parchment paper, and this is why parchment paper is key. Peel it off. Okay, I've got a couple of little breaks that we can fix. I'm gonna take this piece out. That can be a decoration on your plate or you can use it, eat it. And you're gonna just line this back. And because it's so sticky, it will stick back together. Let's see, it's it's wonky, so let's see. I cut it unevenly, so I'm gonna adjust this. Have the thicker side on the actual thinner side here. I've got a little piece coming off. I'm gonna adjust and fix. Fix that little corner. That one's not the greatest, but you get the idea. I have to be really careful with it. We'll fix that little corner. And of course you can see the line on this kind, but it's super easy. No big deal. Everything looks good and it's sticking together because the brie cheese itself is sticky. You can see it left marks on my plate. I will wash my hands, but there's a little piece you can eat or use as a decoration somewhere else on your board. And we're gonna just fill this with the jam. Um, but I'm gonna wash my hands because I got brie all over myself. Okay, so I rinsed off my hands. I've got my brie cheese here and I'm just gonna put some jelly. This one's great because it's a squirt bottle so it's easy to just kind of fill it up. And then we will spread it around with a spoon. And it's just is really pretty and you don't need a whole lot because it will spread out. Just need enough to cover this whole little section. So we'll just work on spreading it in. Filling up that whole thing. And I don't want to do like a really thick layer of this because it is just to add a little bit of sweetness. But you want it to cover enough that it looks decorative and pretty. Okay, flatten it out, make it look a little smooth. And brie cheese, it's done. So for this one, I don't necessarily need the parchment paper underneath it. It will get sticky on your board as people are chopping it but this part is pretty okay. So we can set it right on the board and then decorate around it. And it just looks super cute, All right? And now we're gonna do a little bit um, trickier of a technique, but it's the same concept. You're gonna use a cookie cutter and make a decoration on top of the brie. So again, we're gonna open this brie up, find the top side, which is not the old the wrinkly side. There's the top. This one did get a little bit mashed, but it's fine. All right, so for this top one, we're gonna do the same exact thing, except I'm not going to actually cut that layer. And some people might find cutting the layer tricky because it is really delicate as you're adding it back. But this one also can be tricky depending on what design you're cutting out of it. So you do like a mitten, a star. That one's kind of big for this surface. Let's see if I have a smaller star. Like this one, oops, poked my brie. So this one, it would be a star. So I'm not gonna cut that layer. I'm gonna actually take the star out and it's a little bit trickier of a process. So you're gonna just go ahead and cut the shape on the top surface. And it doesn't matter really how far you go in. You just wanna make sure you go in far enough that you have a sizable area that you can cut out. So I made sure I could cut this out. And it's, you know, it's sticky cheese. So it takes a second to get out. And then you're gonna carve this piece out, which again, like because of the corners and stuff, this can be a little bit of a delicate process. You just tend to like start in the middle. So I don't 
damage any edges. And again, use common sense. Don't go at this really crazy. Take your time, dig out your design. And this obviously is not salvageable at this point. This one, you get an intact little decoration for your board. This way right here, you don't. You really just butcher the inside of it. This could be like a snack as you're building your board. Have a little breeze snack. And I would like clean up edges, but I'm just mainly getting the whole surface out. You're gonna take your time, just remove things very slowly so you don't end up hurting yourself. Last thing we want is like a cut right over something that you're gonna try to serve people. Well, that would not be good. Okay, and last little corner. And the more intricate the cookie cutter, the more delicate you're gonna to have to be with the design, but I could be moderately delicate and get that. And of course, it's gonna be filled in, so you don't necessarily have to worry about the whole surface being smooth or even, but I wanna get this little corner carved a little bit better. Try not to butcher the design too much. Okay, so now that we have it sufficiently carved out, this one holds your whole design intact. So you're not gonna get the cracks, you're not gonna get the line, but it just takes a little bit more um, delicate touch to dig it in there. But this one really gives you that extra bit of wow factor because it is one whole big piece now. Oh, we got some jelly, same deal. We're gonna stick it in and then spread it around. If you're more comfortable with this way, you can go with this method. If you're more comfortable with the other way and slicing the whole piece off, you can. Either way it works. There's pros and cons to either way. They both end up looking amazing on the board, even if you get cracks. Still look great. All right, I need a little bit more in there. And then again, like if this is a Christmas star, this reddish color is really a nice touch. That looks pretty good. So there you go, another wow factor type of brie for your board. I'll scoop this over so you can see both of those. So that is a great option. These are little snacks for me for later. One great thing about this is this is something you can totally do fully ahead of time making this. I have some Pyrex containers that are great for storage for this and that's what I'll store it in in the fridge. They're just like these semi-deep ones. I don't know how much food these ones hold, but they're great for storing something like this until you're ready to go. So you can make this the day of, earlier in the day, or you can make this um, the night before and have it ready to go so you don't have to worry about your rushing like at time of making the board. It can store really easy. So I'll link to these. They came in two packs from Target, which are just really convenient. They got multiple lid colors, which I happen to really like too. So I do a lot of food prep with these ones. So that's a great way to store them in those little Pyrex containers. And then you just pop them out, stick them on your board when you're ready to assemble. So there are the two options that are really wow factor ones. And now as far as cutting the cheese. <laughs> um, it's just gonna be a matter of slicing and arranging. I guess I'll use my same piece. So I will have like a smaller piece to stick on the board as I'm arranging, but we're just gonna slice this about the same thickness as I'm going across the cheese, or you can slice them in wedges like pies. So with the smaller ones, I totally would slice them as pie slices around, but you're gonna get the same kind of uh, pretty effect where there's rind on the edge of it so you can stack them and make them really pretty in arrangements. And this one's done by weight, so it's got all the info on the bottom. If I do like cut this with a knife, I wanna be careful not to cut into the brie as I'm cutting the packaging off. So I tend to just, you know, hulk it and rip it. And I have bought the smaller brie cheeses to do the same design. So for this, I would cut this in multiple layers to do decorating because I don't necessarily need all of the long pieces. So I'm gonna just chop this one a little bit and I'll do pie slices. So this slice you can use for something else or you can slice it up as well. I'm gonna do it like this so each of my pieces looks one certain way. I'm just gonna slice down and again, serrated knife works great for this but they do get sticky. And as I'm slicing them, they're, they're sticky. So I would take my parchment paper that is my extra piece. Let's say I'm going to make a line of brie on my board. I'll take my little snippet of parchment paper, stick it there so you guys can see, and then I will start lining them up. Just lining them up, slice a few at a time. And I'm thinking, you know, if people are putting these on crackers, I want them to be decent enough sized, but not so thick 
but they're gonna be hard to eat. And I also don't want them so thin that they're gonna just kind of fall all over the place. So them, and then I just arrange them however I want them. Like layered, kind of do this sort of thing. Layer them so that they're gonna make a cute little pattern. This one has a little extra piece, so I pull that off to make it look a little nicer. I don't want them layered exactly on top of each other, kind of like catty cornered there. And as if my knife gets stickier and stickier with this project, I may end up rinsing my knife a couple of times to make sure it's not gonna to cause too much chaos and mess. I might switch out my gloves at some point. Just making a little design down my board and you can do this with a really cool pattern. You can make like an S shape or a curve around your board, make this pattern close to something else and then people can pull off the top piece. I like the way that it looks and you can do this with like a monster cheese that has that reddish looking edge. You can do this with various other cheeses that have an edge or just regular plain cheese too. I like the way that it looks when you're getting this little weave design. I I'm cutting off camera, but you're getting the idea of how, how this is working, just arranging it. I won't end up using all of it because you get the idea, but you can make really long strips of this or just short little areas. I'm like, I would pull this piece off again because I'm getting little pieces of that rind, but that's really all you do with it. And just decorate it however you want. I've seen people also arrange these in like a circular shape. I've done that as well. If you're already having one of these, you don't want to do the jelly or cookie cutter technique. You can arrange the same sort of thing. I'm going to take the same sort of pieces and arrange it in kind of a circle. So I'll use this piece over here. There's brie cheese everywhere, but I'll just start arranging these kind of in a circle. And you get a really cool like fan going. I may not have enough to go all the way around the circle, but you get the idea where it looks like a little circle. And then as I get back around to that first one, I would tuck this one underneath. Just a little bit of a tricky endeavor sometimes because you're already dealing with sticky looking cheese, but you can turn it into a little flower type of design if you want to. Um, you can have the little zigzaggy design. And then another way to arrange it really simply is just creating your line by stacking them on top of each other. And, you know, make it into like a zigzag shape. You can end up making whatever kind of shape you want as you go. You look kind of like a little dominoes. Of course, I'm like woman handling the brie, but I'd be wearing gloves if I was doing this on a board for a lot of people. But you get the idea, you can arrange it into a zigzag around whatever produce or meats you have on the board. You can do some curves like that. And that gives you three ways to just arrange the slices and it makes it super easy. So I think that is it for this brie cheese video. I showed you guys a couple of like wow factor ones. I showed you how to arrange in various different ways to make it look cute on your board if you're going ahead and slicing it. Now I would have some sort of cheese spreader or slicer with you, um, like next to your board. I just have a butter knife. I'm basic, I don't have the accessories yet as far as like cheese spreaders and that kind of thing, but you can totally get a little set on Amazon. I've been eyeing a few, so I'll try to link to a couple of good suggestions down below that look cute and it'll make it easy for people to slice into your wheel if you have the whole thing on your board. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll link to various things down below. I think I got these leaf ones on Amazon actually. And yeah, that is it for this charcuterie basics. If you have other things that you want to learn as far as charcuterie, let me know in the comments section down below. I've got a couple of other videos planned out in this charcuterie basics series. So be sure to check it out. I have a playlist down below for you guys as well. So if you're seeing this later, you can see the other charcuterie basics videos. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it. And I'm gonna go have a brie snack now. I've got this little scraps that I can work on and I'm gonna put the rest of it in these little Pyrex containers and they work just perfectly for these. So I'll have like chunks of brie in here. Be sure to like and subscribe and follow me along and I will catch you guys next time.